రేష్మి ఒకసారి నా ఫోన్ ఇక్కడ నా ఫోన్ ఇక్కడ that there were per, something called perfect scores where uh, we used to be only two or three used to get it and now we find all of a sudden in the last year 67 students got it and uh, after some review it just found that uh, there were a lot of hanky panky in this so first of all uh, there, there have been uh, other things that have been introduced like grace marks now grace marks is a very dangerous thing uh, which is uh, been introduced where you know um, uh, out of uh, uh, personal contacts and so on you can uh, increase your mama uh, your uh, in your uh, uh, position in fact there was a time when we there were only two or three students who used to get perfect scores now the perfect score means 100% uh, the, it's gone up to a, a huge number uh, relatively speaking of 67 in the last two years so i uh, i would say that we have before us um, a, a um, i mean i have been a professor but i was a professor when we are all these famous professors who used to mark the examinations with their own hands and It was a great privilege and they, they went through all, all the um, every sentence uh, and gave you an answer which nobody ever completed. Today is the, the situation is not there because the entrance exam has now been uh, has become so big and uh, therefore uh, the situation has changed. So I, I am not that familiar with the present system. But Arvind Chaturvedi who is with us has been a professional. uh he has been at uh, he was a key from uh in the suit technology and uh, so he has been been also so i think uh, what i would do, do think this is the first let's hear 
uh, from Arvind Chandrayi. Uh, his diagnosis of the ill today in the heat, and is there a hope of curing it? Over to you, Chair Arvind. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me start with the the present controversy, uh, which many of our, our viewers may also be aware of. In brief, so first I'll mention uh, what is the actually uh, uh, the problem with the NEET exam and why the controversy has been created. Then I'll come about the NEET exam itself, and then the formation of NEET, uh, uh, how the NEET has been formed, and what the agency such as NTA, which has started this NEET exam, uh, there has been a problem, and it is not the first time that we have problem. Uh, last several years we have had problems with the NEET results, and then I will discuss about the uh, details of the current situation and then the solutions that are possible. Uh, through mutual discussion now we all know that this uh, controversy arose because of the results of the neat 2024 neat has been conducted for several years now uh, and this neat exam that is called national eligibility come entrance test this has been started uh, by an agency called nta national testing agency and we'll go into the formation of this agency later but this exam has been full of controversies uh, for several years now last year uh, sorry this year 2000 uh, 2 lakhs uh, 23 lakhs student appeared 2.3 million students appeared in the neat test previous year it was roughly around 21 lakhs uh, earlier it was 18 19 lakhs it has been increasing every year and it will continue to increase because there is no uh, limit on number of attempts one student can take into the neat or the medical uh, entrance that means those who fail they continue to appear so the number is also increasing and the new population is also adding new student so number is continuous increase now to handle exam of this size uh we require agency which is very robust and uh, uh, people who are Uh, in the know of academics and exam system, they should be part of it. But what NEET, is, uh, how the NEET is handled by NTA is NTA has very scant staffing of its own. Most of the uh, examination control is in the hands of contractors, and these are private contractors. And you know when the private contractors come into the play, what kind of vested interest they may have. so the present controversy arose when the results of the neat were declared in the first week of june actually the results were supposed to be declared on 14th of june and we are hearing for the first time in india an agency declares the result 10 days in advance so results were declared much more uh, uh, earlier than it was supposed to be but anyway they say that ele election results will be out and all that so 4th june before that we should uh, declare the result so 10 days in advance the results were declared next day itself when dr sami you just now mentioned there were 67 toppers so students who saw the list they found it has happened for the first time in any exam in india and maybe perhaps in the world that there are so many perfect scorers neat exam has 180 questions each question has four marks and if the answer is incorrect there is a negative marking that you get minus 1 so only those who score those who answer all 180 questions correctly they only can get 720 score they are the topper and uh, last few years results show that there was a one topper two toppers maybe sometimes four toppers but this time there were 67 toppers so the eyebrows were raised and when the eyebrows were raised people started probing into it that how come it has happened and in the list of the toppers it was found there is one college in haryana <laughs> which has seven toppers and all the seven toppers roll numbers were also very close to each other maybe perhaps they were sitting in the same room <laughs> and this itself is enough indication of the kind of examination system we have and as i said earlier since the entire 
the system is handled by private contractors even the colleges they have to apply and the nta selects the colleges and uh, maybe one college can bid for three four centers and so on and so forth and uh, so when the controversy arose about 67 topper people started looking into the marks they also found that some students had 719 marks they're not the topper but one mark less than the perfect score or 718 marks now in the present marking system where you answer 180 question correctly you get 720 and if you have one question is incorrect you get 715 because uh, four marks gone for one uh, uh, wrong question and minus one is also added so it was impossible in any system to get to in the present marking system to get 718 or 719 so the question was raised after three days the explanation was provided that there some grace marks were given and as dr swami just now mentioned this system of grace marks is again unique in this uh, particular exam and then the, when the probing was done that why there was a grace mark they said in some exam centers the paper was not distributed in time some students had less time to complete the examination process because we see three hours so maybe some to compensate for the time loss some marks were given but no explanation was provided now the aggrieved students went to the court when the aggrieved students went to the court court issued notice to nta and ministry of education minister of education mr dharmendra pradhan who was also minister of education in the previous regime or uh, um, modi 2.g 2.0 he continued to maintain that there is nothing wrong in the system there is no uh, 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 scam in this picture and uh, nta will take care of it don't worry he kept on maintaining that but then uh, ultimately after few days when supreme court started uh, asking nta for explanation nta admitted this uh, grace marks were given and when the questions were uh, raised at this system of giving grace marks then NTA said, all right, we will withdraw this left marks <laughs> to compensate for the students who have lost the rank. We will conduct a re-exam on 23rd of June. And they also gave a list of those students who got the grace mark. There were some 1,563, 1,563 students. And they were told, if you want to uh, appear in the re-exam, you appear, it is not compulsory. If it is, If you don't appear, then your old score without the grace mark will be used for the rank. So when 23rd June the re-exam was conducted, half of the students, roughly 863 or say 800 and odd students appeared. That means remainder students were not sure that they will maintain that score and therefore they avoided the re-exam. So that is a controversy. And then the in the uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, probing was going on, investigation uh, was going on. Uh, then uh, the police also came into action, uh, EOW, Economic Offences Wing, uh, CBI and many other places, different uh, 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 force, they started examining. They found that Dharman Pradhan was lying. Why Dharman Pradhan was lying? They identified in Patna on the 5th of May, the day of the exam, one person was arrested. One person was arrested because the paper was leaked and this person uh, 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 confessed in, uh, 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 to the police that he was given the complete question paper, not handed over, but he was given the questions and all, he was asked to re remember all the answers and somehow cram the answers and then write in the next day and when next day, as soon as he completed the exam, he was arrested. That means it was in the full knowledge of the education ministry and NTA that at least one case was found in Patna where the person has been arrested, which is uh, sufficient for uh, them to take notice of. But they uh, ignored it as if nothing has happened and Dharman Pradhan kept on men uh, mentioning that nothing is wrong with this. And uh, if you investigate, 
सम सेवन और एट स्टेट्स बिहार झारखंड महाराष्ट्र आंध्र तमिलनाडु गुजरात सेवन स्टेट्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस स्कैम एंड टुडे वन मेजर आई ओपनिंग प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस वॉज कंडक्टेड बाय शक्ति सिंह गोयल शक्ति सिंह गोयल इज द कांग्रेस लीडर ऑफ गुजरात Uh, he has been mp and mla and minister also and he has given all the proof which are required he also issued a statement given by the deputy deputy superintendent of police of anand so he said in anand in godra and some other towns of gujarat there was one institution called jay jalram institution and this institution had taken the contract for several centers and the uh, the the Uh, chairman of this institution is some mr patel and who is known to uh, mr modi uh, because he has appeared in the several photographs with him uh, smriti irani the then education minister in the first government in uh, uh, modi 1.0 and uh, then you have education minister of gujarat mr chudasamma at that time and some other people they also appeared uh with him in the exa- in fact the centers were inaugurated by mr modi himself uh, the college center in anand anyway uh, so uh, then it was found the uh, the, the procedure uh, modus operandi modus operandi which was similar to the person who was arrested in bihar uh in the in the uh, gujarat the modus operandi was that the question paper was leaked uh, in this case in K- gujarat there is another kind of scam this was that the students can opt for change in the center so people lined up in gujarat centers that i want to have this center i want to have this center and people did not know why people from odisha and different states uh, are coming to this center naturally there was a good setting done you know setting means uh, the the uh, system has been you know uh, compromised and uh, the answer sheet were from the sealed boxes answer sheets blank answer sheets were taken out uh, with the name of the student and the correct answers were marked as you know this is a uh, pen and paper test where the examination marking is this called uh, uh, omr sheets omr sheets means that the pencil marks are recognized by the computer and the scores are given so this marking was done by the person who has been the vice president of the bharatiya janata party minority cell in gujarat and he had controlled many students thing so these this i mean uh, uh, this now this was revealed today that fir was filed on 8th of may 5th of may the exam was conducted 8th of may the fir fir was filed and the investigation started and dharman pradhan did not know about it I think what Dharmendra Pradhan has done is he has misled the parliament, he has misled the court, and he has provided false information. He has concealed information, and he has kept the information to himself, despite the fact that he knew everything. Not only he, but in terms of Ministry of Education, people should know that this has happened. So uh, uh, this uh, may be in the solution. Uh, I I have heard demand Dharmendra Pradhan should be dismissed forthwith. because he has compromised with the system and he has uh, uh, concealed the information from court and the public now this is the, the the tip of the iceberg investigation is still going on as i said jharkhand maharashtra andhra pradesh telangana uh, uh, tamil nadu gujarat all these investigation are going on and more than 30 people have already been arrested hajari bag the principal of the school and the vice principal of the school of course some people say that he has been framed and all that uh, for different reason i'm not going to that but and a journalist a patrakar from jharkhand who was also involved in this deal he has been arrested and in bihar of course they say the person who had managed this question paper uh, was known to the private secretary of tejashvi yadav i am not going into these uh, allegations uh, whether these allegation may be political allegation but yes a guest house room was booked in the name of this person called yadvendu uh, sikandar or something and this yadvendu sikandar 
is known to the private secretary of Tejasvi Yadav, and he had booked the room. But anyway, uh, so uh, this, this is still going on. Now, what about NEET? NEET uh, was set up in 2017. Actually, uh, during uh, Narsimha Rao's time in 1992, you see, this is also a commentary when you look into these, these uh, uh, details that how they have a government function, how slow they function. It's not only, uh, I mean, they say, no din chile ad high cost, it's not uh, uh, speed. But 1992, when I think Arjun Singh was the human resources minister, uh, that time it was called human resources ministry, now it is called education ministry once again. Human resources minister, he had recommended that a national testing agency should be uh, formed, set up. And this was based on the national education policy of 1986. The recommendation was made in 1986. The decision was made in 1992 and it took 20, almost 20 years, 2010 some committee was set up and all that and 20, 2013 the recommendation were made. Ultimately in 2017 the committee was set up. And this committee, uh, the, the NTA is a society registered under Societies Act in the Ministry of Education. And chairman was appointed by the Ministry of Education. Of course, recently, uh, after the controversy, the Director General uh, Sobhat Kumar Singh uh, was uh, uh, dismissed uh, or, or, or suspended, whatever. He has been removed and new Director General has taken over, who is an a, a, a IAS officer. Uh, and uh, this IAS officer will now probe into this and uh, come with the new system. Uh, the, uh, I have already given you the details of NEET exam, so I think uh, we have to see the time also. Uh, major controversies, the NTA is not the first time that it is under controversy. In 2020, one student who was declared topper of the medical NEET exam, he actually did not write the exam himself. For some excuse, he had taken a person, the, I mean, we have in all the university system that if the person is unable to write with the hand or something, some kind of writer is given to him in the exam. And this is a common procedure. So a particular person who topped the list, writer was given and he topped the exam. And uh, people raised objection that how can this person do that? He has not done well in the uh, other uh, exams and all that. Some investigation was done. Seven persons were arrested including the person who had talked, including him, the parents of that person and the school authority and some such things. So there was a big controversy. And several controversies have happened in the NEET exam. Some student whose uh, result was declared and uh, she was given only six marks out of 720 and she committed suicide. But later on, when the probe was done, he had scored 590 marks and so on. So, so many people have committed suicide because of mistakes in the results. And NTA, uh, I mean, as a, because you see, uh, if one or two or ten persons uh, complain about the system, uh, nobody takes seriously. And this time, since huge demonstrations have taken place all over the country, and some political parties have also been taking this issue and they have raised this issue in parliament also so the some kind of serious uh, thing is being done otherwise nta would have passed uh, this uh, controversy also now coming back to this uh, uh, probe once again uh, complaints related to leakage of the paper complaint related to favors conducted by for, for the contractors corrupt practices used in the examination uh, the concessions given to various parties which are involved in this and I have mentioned already the controversies which are already in public domain and which have been uh, uh, mentioned by uh, uh, people uh, including the uh, today's uh, press conference by Shakti Singh Goel in, uh, and I am sure this will uh, uh, raise the issues further because Bharti Janta Party uh, office bearer and uh, involved and the chairman of the uh, college that has been made. He has several colleges in Anand, in Godhra, and some other parts of uh, Gujarat. And I'm sure the people will take notice of it. BJP will defend it. 
but uh, uh, so the controversy is that uh, why dharmendra prasad was hiding was he doing it deliberately or he did not know it if he did not know, know it then he deserves to be sacked because be, being an education minister of the country if you do not know what's happening under your nose then you have no right to continue as a education minister number one number two if he was hiding it deliberately then it is all the more reason that without wasting a day prime minister narendra modi should sack education minister mr dharmendra pradhan and order a probe what probe has been ordered now a committee has been set up this committee has been set up under the chairmanship of uh, mr k radhakrishnan who was a former head of isro and who is also chairman of board of governors of iit kanpur uh, this committee has been formed a week back and uh, k radhakrishnan has suggested some members also this committee will go into the examination system and suggest the remedial measures to be taken but uh, maybe when the reports come uh, that's a different issue altogether and uh, uh, see and question on nta dr swami you had raised this question about nta in the beginning nta is not only neat they conduct a large number of examinations in india and these examination systems are not only for recruitment uh, they are also for uh, a different exam for example jee joint entrance examination Uh, for iits and other engineering colleges you know uh, iits uh, they have been almost about uh, uh, 60 65 60 65 years that iits were set up and initially they used to conduct the examination themselves and when the number of participants increased to a large size then they broke it into two uh, main examination and the advanced examination so main examination was used as a cut off by other agencies also in 2013 they introduced the uh, system of two exams uh, earlier uh, they used to be what is called ai triple e all india engineering entrance examination which has been now merged with jee similarly for medical entrance they used to be all india pmt pre medical test and all india pre medical uh, uh, test this was done by different states for example uttar pradesh will have its own pmt Karnataka will have its own PMT and so on and so forth. <coughs> so this was done by the state governments or a, a department in the state government. And uh, after the NEET, it was taken over. But let me also tell you, uh, uh, Ramesh is also here uh, about the uh, Tamil Nadu government. Tamil Nadu government has been opposing the NEET from day one. <laughs> Tamil Nadu government has been saying that NEET is unfair to the poor students. neet has been unfair to the students who speak tamil they do not know english and so on and so forth therefore in fact even yesterday there was a statement from tamil nadu government that we are scrapping neet but naturally being a part of the uh, union government uh, state governments cannot take such a decision but tamil nadu government has also filed is they gone to the court they have filed several appeals about scrapping of the neet so maybe if the uh, scrapping of the neet is done after these controversies maybe some kind of reform is required similarly the reform is required in all the examination cuet central university entrance test in fact uh, uh, it was started only last year because central different central universities uh, do, did not did have their own independent system and it was causing some problem because people have to apply to different uh, universities and several applications have to be given so cuet was introduced similarly like uh, jnu jawaharlal nehru university this examination is handled by nta similarly we have several uh, uh, government bodies like indian institute of foreign trade iift in delhi which was earlier in the commerce ministry they uh, the offer mba program uh, they do not uh, go by the cat combined admission test and therefore uh, nta does the exam so nta does several exams for university grant commission CISR the exam which has been cancelled recently after this controversy was UGC NET NET this UGC NET exam is uh, necessary for a person who is applying for a lecturership in any university or any college and so CISR is for a scholarship of the uh, same same academic cadre and uh, UGC also has a uh, cadre which is 
NET. NET is a qualifying exam. So, so somebody who has not qualified NET cannot become a lecturer in a government college or something or, or a state university. Private university do take, but most of the private universities also have made NET compulsory. So this is NTA and this is just brief and now we can discuss the issue and how we arrive at solutions. Yeah, <clears throat> before uh, we go to my, my other colleagues here, uh, Jagdish, uh, Jagdish, I would like to just make two, two comments. One is that look at the degradation that has taken place in India. There was a time when uh, we used to have Saraswati Puja. I was taught from childhood, never put your foot on any printed paper because that is uh, an insult to Saraswati. That is the kind of uh, respect we have for education. Right. And if there was somebody who was an educated man, then we thought very highly of him. But today, I find so many politicians, I have to catch them to find out that they have a bogus uh, uh, you know, uh, degrees. I, I can name people because I've gone to public on this. Uh, Sonia Gandhi was the one who bluffed me about her you know, going to the University of Cambridge. Same thing with her son. There, there are, uh, I, I'm not so sure about Mr. Modi's uh, education qualification either. So I think the society should also now begin to say that if anyone claims that he is educated, then he must prove it uh, uh, openly and should not hesitate at all. Today when I point out the A is a bogus education, the other fellow has got a bogus degree and so on, people say, no, no, why get into this, you know, there will be problems, uh, leave it to them. No, the education should be treated as the highest uh, spiritual thing for us. And we Indians particularly placed education at the top. It's there in Bhagavad Gita, it's there everywhere. So therefore, I think uh, we cannot improve this situation. If anybody can uh, claim any degree that he has and nobody then, uh, you know, questions them. Uh, or ostracizes them. So I think we need the Indian public now to be very strict. And particularly when it comes to election and you found that the fellow has told a lie, he must be defeated no matter how wonderful otherwise he is. He must be defeated because he has he has um, uh, uh, actually spoiled the, uh, the name of uh, Saraswati by doing so. This is, I think, one aspect of our culture which is necessary before we can bring uh, policing. Policing is only uh, can be supplemental in such situations. Arvind, before uh, uh, Dr. Swami and Arvind, you all have given a very good insight. Arvind has given a detail of all the exams. What I want from Arvind Chaturvedi is, what do you find, what is the solution to the present mess which is affecting the exams and the students' life? What is the way out of the present mess? Because uh, from the questions and from what campaign is going on, there are two types of campaign going on and which is clearly reflected in what the questions uh, students are putting. One group of students don't want the exam to be reconducted again. And one group says, we go ahead with the uh, whatever is the uh, re result so whatever it is. So I just want Arvind Chaturvedi's first take in the matter. What he wants to say and what is the way out of the present mess? Now, Jagdish, I said in the beginning that in, uh, in 1986, education policy recommended forming of a central testing agency for the simple reason that number was increasing every year. Now, as I have said, especially exams like JEE, -E, Joint Entrance Examination for Engineering and uh, NEET uh, for Medical. These are two main streams where uh, people, after doing their secondary schools, they go for their career making. And this number of uh, uh, examinees, uh, the number of participants increasing day by day. 14 lakhs students appear in joint, joint Entrance Examination for Engineering. It is not a joke. Now, similarly, for management students, I mean the um, uh, management area for several years, 
I know CAT is the main exam, combined admission test. And this combined admission test is done by Indian Institutes of Management themselves. They by rotation do it. Uh, for example, one, one year uh, uh, I am Ahmedabad is conducting the exam all over India. Next year maybe Bangalore or Calcutta or uh, so the different. Now there are 20 IIMs. Now uh, earlier there were only four or five. So now the number of uh, applications has also gone up. Now large number of management colleges all over India, they also recognize the score of CAT and um, the students who undertakes the CAT, if it does not qualify for IIM or one of the IIMs, they go for uh, other colleges. Similarly, I mentioned about IIT. IIT is due to do it themselves. And even today, the second part after JE means which is done by NDA, advanced test is done by IITs and they do it by rotation. This year it has been done by IIT Madras, that is 2024. Next year IIT Kanpur will do it. And similarly, the turn of different IITs come. And if I know, uh, I think uh, 1970s uh, this uh, test started earlier, IITs were admitting on merit basis and their own uh, small test. But uh, after that they had all India exam. So last 50 years, more than 50 years actually, except once in 1997, IIT examination paper was leaked. Otherwise, in last 50, 50 years, nothing has happened in IIT. I know how fair IIT exam is. Professors who are in IIT for several years, even their children, if they don't qualify, there's no way uh, they can get into. And I've, I've seen several professors whose children have attempted IITs and have failed. It is such a fair exam. So maybe if the, the uh, there is a will, there is a way. So first of all, the NTA is uh, based on the uh, outside contractors. There is no full time uh, staff, and therefore don't, there is no stakes. There is no responsibility, uh, and therefore the examination should be conducted by a body which has full time staff, so that somebody can be uh, blamed if something goes wrong and some, somebody can be identified. Right now, it's very easy because uh, the exam uh, example I gave, the one college by paying some uh, uh, under the table uh, money or uh, 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 by unfair means, they can get their centers nominated for exam and then they can uh, c cover the fees by uh, through students, by taking money from the student and that is what has been found. So the system has to be foolproof, system has to be done by an agency which has full time staff and such as IITs or uh, IIMs. IIMs uh, in last uh, uh, almost what 50 years, no leak has ever been reported. Nobody has ever complained about any mistake in I IIM system. But well, uh, uh, the, the, since that was earlier that was also under government control, all the IIMs were also uh, part of the uh, government because they were found by the resolution of parliament. Now only a few years they are independent after the IAM bill was brought. But otherwise uh, they were part of the government earlier. So if they can man manage, IITs can manage, IAMs can manage in India, why can't uh, NTA manage it? So uh, it can be managed provided, you see, going back to the old system of uh, uh, giving freedom to the states to organize there will be many different issues, there will be many different questions. And the problem why central examination was required is, suppose there is a person who is seeking the entrance into medical college, the candidate has to look for opportunities. He or she has to apply for one, uh, one exam in Uttar Pradesh, one in Karnataka, one in Maharashtra, one in Gujarat. So several exams have to be, uh, the candidate has to appear in. So one central exam is good. One central, central exam I am not against. But the, the system has to be foolproof and the uh, agency uh, has to be responsible. Dr. Swami, you have been exposed uh, to academics in a sense. You were the top ranking student in Delhi University, then I, uh, Indian Institute of uh, Statistics, then, then you were in Harvard and you taught in Harvard also. What type the NTA is if I am not mistaken, the secretary general or something, there is a or director general, that post is 
earlier also one ias officer and today also a newly appointed man is an ias officer it's an educational body the objective of this organization is to conduct fair examination so what is your comment on these ias officers holding these positions in these bodies i totally agree with you jagdish ias officers should not be made in charge of any educational institution number 1 the minister of education should be someone who is educated and not someone who uh, who can act as uh, as a donkey for uh, some other uh, uh, you know higher placed minister who can ensure that my, you know all these uh, his friends uh, children and all get their admissions done through the minister the, this the, the bane has started this there was a i mean you had uh, giants as uh, education minister in the india you see when we are hardly a, uh, begun as a independent country then after this uh, I, i regret to say the whole thing began to deteriorate and uh, we have uh, we and the bjp have taken it one step forward that's about all but i can give you examples of the previous uh, last 2 3 4 governments where uh, the the you know they they ruined the educational system by breaking the rules and bypassing them uh and dr swami i i ramesh i would like ramesh to comment he is based in america what type yes. of system they have there and how much transparency there is in america in this uh selection processes um uh, thank you jagdish uh quickly i'll go over what we have we have a system called eps educational testing services it is a private entity it is not a government entity they have been conducting uh, the stofel gre sat all these exams for i don't know maybe even 100 years or maybe 60 70 years to my near knowledgeable and, and, and uh, all over the globe all over the globe and the, the exam is taken by students all over the globe um they have never faced an issue where paper leak and this and that uh, i they have not they have not been such a huge controversy as to what is happening and impacting so many students number one the the impact of this sat scores which is on in 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 the us has been more off late being taken to a different direction because some of the universities feel that the hard working asian students score higher than uh, other students so they are saying some good universities are saying we will do, we'll do a, a virtue signaling and not we'll take only 50% of or some percentage of sat scores academic and plus other things also let's say if you are doing sports arts and all those things we have to do a comprehensive thing and not only sat so this is the model that we are following in the us as of today so you cannot just say you have high scores in your entrance exam you are given an admission that is not how it works you have to balance everything together it is this entrance exam is just a filtering thing because there are millions of students so you filter once to do that among the filter students some weightage is given to this entrance exam weightage is given to your regular academics non academic things that you have done everything put together so they want a rounded student this is the concept in which us is following and this is not only in the us because as arvind ji just said these exams are conducted student takes this exam all over the world be it india china all over europe everywhere they take the same exam and there is absolutely no issues and plus what they do is they don't have the exams happening on the same day some us students will take it on one day so basically you can reduce the corruption you can reduce this uh, cheating and all these paper leaks by having like what you are conducting elections have neat exams in different modes so that you don't know which paper is going where so you reduce the chance of paper getting leaked and keep that electronic unfortunately this time uh, they have conducted in this uh, mcr model of basically the ocr recognition paper model and there is bound to be lot of chances of being that also being rigged unless we get to a point where right now uh, dr swami uh, and uh, jagdish ji all exams conducted by eps in america right now is all electronic no more paper so you have to go sit in a center there is a, a monitor in front of you and a keyboard that's it 
you don't know what question is going to come literally to that extent you don't know what question is going to come to you. okay so it has to be to that level so you can reduce so technology is available facilities are available and i think this is the model india should adopt to reduce the corruption because students are as arvind ji said they are busting their backs studying over a year night and day and why should students who perform, who work very hard study hard for these things be penalized for some crooks who are ready to pay some money and game the system now what has happened now you scrap the system why would the student go and take the exam again imagine the amount of preparation that he has to make there are so many people who can't afford the 3 or 4000 rupees they have to spend to go to a center they don't have a center nearby they why is this not being taken up in the sense that students are get in all of this dr swami what pains me the most neither the pm nor the education minister has owned up the responsibility and accountability saying that we are sorry something has gone wrong i'll give you assurance and i will see to that something some action has been taken if only these four sentences are said by this prime minister that we have that that you guys have sorry i don't want to own it myself so that you have if they even owned up on the responsibility saying that we will investigate nothing instead uh kohli has retired congratulations jadeja has retired congratulations rohit has retired congratulations india has won world cup he is now saying in in one tweet on 27th of june he is saying india's universities are great and is this what the greatness we are talking about when you are conducting a bogus uh, entrance exams for these universities how do you consider that indian universities are great it is a shame and arvind ji i completely agree when iit jees have been conducted without any controversy i think a similar structure with the newer technologies that we have today this can be corrected the core problem dr swami as arvind ji said this the nta why are there only 15 employees when lakhs of students are taking exam 23 lakhs in neat so many others in uh, in uh, in the other exams in engineering exams we're talking about 30 40 lakhs student per year one crore one crore more than one, one crore, crore students ah. one crore students life and future at stake and as dr swami as you said so many people are committing so students are committing suicide and absolutely no sense of responsibility and ownership from the government is shocking and the media is dancing around somewhere else without even looking at the plight of these students and the students are out in the streets who is getting penalized who is getting criminalized the students it is a shame that nobody be it, even the i mean opposition is playing some game little bit but at the end of the day the ownership and accountability has not been taken so the solution from my angle because i'm a technology guy is as i said move electronic make this nta more accountable they are not accountable today they are an independent society so they are pointing fingers oh we are only 15 people we don't know i gave contract to this guy you i gave contract to that guy you go why are you catching the guy at the end of the rope the guy who created it should have been put in jail put all the 15 members of the nta in jail first for failure to conduct an exam and spoiling the future of the students throw all the 15 members of this committee nta in jail first and then we will start the investigation yeah. they have no responsibility accountable nothing they are not fearing anything that's all i wanted to say dr sam because it is frustrating oh, yeah. ramesh let me add uh, uh, we are discussing neat and i mentioned about je about because hey, and nta is yeah well let me tell you there are cases where state governments handle many exams for jobs and there also papers are leaked and the students have to suffer for example police service exam where you have to uh, uh, recruit constables for the police force in uttar pradesh has been leaked twice and both the times the examination results were cancelled now look at the examination system when a uh, participant has to suffer the person has to travel for maybe a student or a, a person who is already employed from his or her residence to the center of the examination stay overnight appear next morning in the examination and then so eating staying lodging boarding and all that and then if the examination is cancelled all that expenses is to go on again it is I not an one more thing in some of the cases at least at least most of the girl candidates the parent also one of the parent or somebody correct correct, correct. Right, where will they stay? Post Expenses the security. are double. Expenses are double. And I was uh, examining 
in Uttar Pradesh in last 10 years, some 40 examinations have been cancelled or the papers were leaked. It's not only one JE or need that we are talking about. So the system is so yeah. corrupt. System is so corrupt, full of people who have vested interest. They will not allow if, for example, if I'm interested in 10 candidates to be uh, recruited and if I'm unable to get it, I will somehow uh, see to it that the exa whole examination is cancelled. So the next time I can try. One next time I can try. This is the way things are happening in India and I'm not talking about Uttar Pradesh alone, I'm not talking about national test alone. In every state, the same thing has happened for many state conducted exams. One small, small input, Arvindji, anecdotally, in exams in, in the US, in some of these exams, they have a bouquet of, let's say, 500 questions. No student, two students will get the same exact set of questions for everyone. They'll be randomized. They take a bunch, give it to the computer. The computer will randomly generate it, say, okay, this question is assigned to you. It can assign it to another student also. But I'm saying that one guy sitting next, they wouldn't know what question they're getting. It's all Correct. that. Not, only that. Unless... Not only that, if there's a multiple choice questions, A, B, C, D, and the A is Order the correct answer, Order so one student A will be correct answer, second person B will be the correct, correct. answer. That is exactly so it's correct no way. No yeah, copying can no be possible. There is no way to cheat. This is exactly so these why. These softwares are available. These technologies available. are available. Today, that is what I'm trying to say. This Correct. is available today. Students in India take these kind of exams today. When they go to sit and sat or uh, TOEFL or something like that, they do take exams like this. It is not that it is not there. In fact, if I am not mistaken, I may be completely wrong. This meet was electronic and they made a manual this time or something like that. I was not so sure yet. I have not uh, come to a, uh, and I have not fully read through that thing yet. It appeared to have been computerized earlier, but now since the this time they are trying to do the exam, they are doing it paper or some nonsense like that. At the end of the day, there are two things we have to talk to some. There is a corruption that has to be investigated. Throw the 15 members of the NTA in jail first. The PM and the Education Minister have to own up responsibility and as Arvind said, the Education Minister has to be sacked or he should step down. It's a shame that he continues to be one. See what is the solution. The solution is go electronic do these kind of things it is easy to do it is not expensive you can throw open all these computers and all these things private no who cares at the end of the day the questions are coming from a server which nobody even the guys can hack this is the model we need to go otherwise i am telling you the future of these students we're going to see more and more sadly students suffer and when the student says i'm not going to take need in next year i'm going to take next year you are adding cumulatively adding more students down the pipeline where you have only limited number of seats so the competition is increasing by this corruption you are only creating more problems for the students rather than solving them now as i've already said about the full-time staff uh, taking care of the exam we have one university in delhi called indira gandhi national open university right. indira gandhi national open university is about 30 40 years old they conduct entrance examination Hmm. And the professors are involved. I have not seen or heard so far that any examination paper, entrance paper of IGNU was leaked or uh, some, some such thing has happened. I have not heard. Because there are people who are accountable. Their jobs are at stake. Oh, somebody just posted that even if it's online, it can be leaked. I'm telling you, yes, it can be leaked. If there are a thousand questions, a guy goes is there, he cannot memorize a thousand questions. Please try to understand. The technology is there, it is going to randomize the question. And if somebody says A, B, C, D, the answer is B, he goes there. It, actually, the answer would be D. Like Arvind said, it will all be randomized. Please try to understand. Techno is it 100% foolproof? Maybe not. But 90%, yes, because I am happy that this 90% of the time it is right. And the students who are deserving, will get us, will score what they want to deserve and rather than undeserving uh, people who go rig these kind of exams. You have uneducated people who rule this country rigging the elections yes, because they can take money. Please try to understand. Don't justify saying that, oh, this can be gone. Uh, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to come to a solution. We can't just sit back and just criticize and say, leave alone. Then that's not the nature of what we do in VHS. Okay? We come, with the, we identify a solution. We, we also identify the problem, the root cause and the solution. That is the logic. And I think some of the students who commented, please try to understand. It has to be randomized. It, if it's not randomized, I'm trying to tell you, you can. You, there's no way you're going to see this. You're going to see more of this nonsense that you're seeing. I, see, I, 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 I feel this through. Before, yes, before I finished, finished. Yeah, before this Arvind finished. winds up, 
I have a few comments to make. Dr. Okay. Swami, you left a cozy job in the Harvard University and you came to India, took up the IIT job. The leftist and Indira Gandhi and her group did not like you being very straightforward and working in IIT. Now, what I want to tell our viewers is that the de corruption is not just in politics. If politics is corrupt, slowly every sphere of life or every sphere of activities get corrupt. Because generally some people think, oh, it's between a politician and a contractor that something has happened. What do I lose? Ultimately, the entire nation loses. Just now, as we see the decay in our admission system, that is due to the corruption which is coming everywhere. A prime minister who came 10 years ago saying, my khaunga nahi aur khane ko dunga nahi. Now we see what is happening. It is shocking. It is now in fact, yeah. Dr. Swami, the, the Jai Jalaram school or a chain of schools and colleges in Gujarat had a bigger scandal of conducting the classes are supposed to be for 66 student the SSC class. They recruited 450 students and the high court fined them some 39 lakh rupees as fine. And it is the same defaulting institution which was given this contract or a bid to conduct this exam. That's right. And this racket happened. So what I'm trying to say is people think when we talk about corruption of 2G or any type of corruption which Dr. Swami has been highlighting or whether it is the National Herald uh, corruption, people sometimes think it is a fight between two politicians or between huh. some politician and a statesman and we did not get into it. But it is like this, the corruption comes into every sphere of life, whether it is the exams, whether it is the hospitals, whether it is our institutions, whether it is the court. So this decay, we have to stop. And I think people should get up, whether it is one political party or another political party. Just now I see some comments. One group of students are now busy saying there should be no re-exam. Uh, another group of students saying there should be an exam. We are not, we are only interested in short come solutions, but we are not looking at the permanent solution to all right. this decay which is happening. So I think we we must rise up as a nation, take tough decisions. And I think in the time has come that our youth has been being cheated. Time and again they have been cheated. And we must support our students to see that justice is done to them. And also right. having ministers who are chamchas, having education minister, who after being sworn in the new government hardly tweeted anything on his own about education policy or any problems of the education sector. He was busy retweeting what his master has been tweeting and he has been retweeting. If you go back and see last few days ago, his timeline on Twitter and you will find he has been just retweeting his master's voice. Nothing yeah. on his own, no views of his own on any of these issues so it is we must come out of the psychophancy and people should realize it the youth who must have uh, voted in the last election or who have become eligible for voting they must rise above all this and see that corruption is rooted out and if moral values get more importance then we can have a better system that's my take on today i now leave it to dr swami or arvind chaturvedi whether you want to have a our last word on this matter. One point, one point. Yata Raja Tata Praja. You have an uneducated person in the top. They would <laughs> want only uneducated people. They don't want to educate the children. I'm telling you. It's like basically I want to get educated. I'm not going to get the others also educated. You translate this in Hindi, the, the DC it's going to like Inna Kaunga na Kane Dunga. He says, I however you want to take it. A person who has no value for education, who doesn't see the value of education, cannot think how valuable it is. It's just sad that we have a bunch of un uneducated people running this country, especially at least 
for I don't care whether you run whatever you want to Jumla, do 10 degrees, somebody gives you an all pol mean, entire political spectrum, entire uh, universal political spectrum, you get 10 degrees like that. But at the end of the day, for heaven's sake, have a decent, sensible guy to be the education minister and have it. This is the future. Please don't play with this. You play with anybody else. This is the future of India. 50 years, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, we are looking at that. And I don't think we should create this kind of a system where you can cheat your way into schools and colleges. It's, it is very sad. <laughs> yeah, I think um, <clears throat> um, one last comment from my side before uh, uh, Arvind uh, winds up. I think uh, this is a ongoing uh, matter and uh, we should have another session of this after a month. Uh, mm -hmm. and then review uh, what changes have taken place, if any, and uh, otherwise uh, what ne we need to do to see that changes are imposed on people who don't want changes. Over to Arvind. Arvind ji. Thank you very Arvind much. Arvind ji, Arvind ji, Arvind, before, you, before you finish, two minutes, whatever we discussed, you can summarize it in Hindi because a lot of people are asking that. If you don't mind, two minutes, summarize what we said, please. I know we are overshooting, but just please take two minutes. Zero, zero. Today, the topic we have been discussing for words of wisdom, Gyan Ganga, is being taken by the country of the country. Not only the country, but the parents of their children, who are also being taken by the country of the country. Because there are mistakes in the pranali, there are mistakes in the pranali, there are mistakes in the pranali, और परीक्षा की प्रणाली में भ्रष्टाचार होने की वजह से ही ये जो नीट एग्जाम का जो विषय आज हमारे सामने आया है एक उदाहरण के रूप में आया है मैंने कई ऐसे दूसरे उदाहरण भी गिनाए जहां नीट के अलावा चाहे वो इंजीनियरिंग की परीक्षा हो चाहे वो जॉब जो, के लिए पुलिस की परीक्षा हो आर और ए का परीक्षा हो दूसरी यू में बहुत ज़्यादा अभी तक इस तरह के कोई ज़्यादा विषय नहीं आए हैं प्रणाली में लीक होने के लेकिन जहाँ पर भी इस प्रकार का लीक होता है ये परीक्षा अभी जो दूसरा एग्जाम कैंसिल हुआ है छः दिन पहले वो तो एन परीक्षा जो नेशनल एलिजिबिलिटी टेस्ट एकेडमिक्स में लेक्चरर के लिए होता है तो इस प्रकार की परीक्षाएं अगर रद्द होती हैं इस डर से रद्द होती हैं कि हमारा सिस्टम इसको नियंत्रण नहीं कर पा रहा है कंट्रोल नहीं कर पा रहा है और परीक्षा का पेपर लीक हो जाएगा यू नेट जो परीक्षा अभी कैंसिल हुई है वो इस डर के कारण हुई है कि शायद इसका परीक्षा पत्र प्रश्न पत्र लीक हो सकता है हुआ है नहीं हुआ पता नहीं तो परीक्षा ही रद्द हो गई तो इस प्रकार का सिस्टम तभी सही हो सकता है जब सरकारी एजेंसी जो इस परीक्षा को नियंत्रित करती है उस नियंत्रण करने वाली समिति में ऐसे लोग हों जो परीक्षा के तंत्र को एग्जामिनेशन सिस्टम को पूरी तरह समझते हों और जो उस परीक्षा तंत्र में रहे हो पहले और सिर्फ आई ऑफिसर के भरोसे अगर हम कोई भी तंत्र चलाते हैं प्रशासन तो उनका हो सकता है दुरुस्त हो लेकिन इस प्रकार की गलतियां बहुत होती हैं और छात्रों का जो परीक्षा में बैठ रहे हैं उनका ट्रस्ट जो है वो हिल जाता है उन्हें इस परीक्षा की प्रणाली में कोई अपना फेथ नहीं होगा विश्वास नहीं होगा और जब विश्वास नहीं होगा उनको पता है कि इतना कंपटीशन है यहाँ पे हम परीक्षा देने जा रहे हैं कल को परीक्षा रद्द हो गई तो दोबारा परीक्षा होगी या हमारी तैयारी बेकार चली जाएगी हम अधूरे मन से तैयारी करते हैं छात्र ये एक बहुत बड़ा हमारा परीक्षा प्रणाली का नकारात्मक पहलू है इन पहलू को डॉक्टर स्वामी ने बताया कि किस प्रकार से हम सोल्यूशन दे सकते हैं शिक्षा से जुड़े हुए लोग शिक्षा के तंत्र में हो परीक्षा के तंत्र में हो और लोग जिम्मेदारी लेने को तैयार हो दायित्व निभाने को तैयार हो जहाँ गलती है उस गलती को सुधार करने के लिए तैयार हो सिर्फ ऊपर ही ऊपर लीपा पोती करने से कुछ नहीं होगा जब तक हम पूरा सिस्टम नहीं बदलेंगे और जो जगदीश जी ने बताया गुजरात का सिस्टम गुजरात में तो जो हुआ है और जो जब जाहिर हुआ है प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस के माध्यम से सबूतों के साथ वो बिल्कुल आँखें खोलने वाला है इसका मतलब है कि राजनीतिक लोग पॉलिटिशियंस लोग भी इस सिस्टम में कहीं ना कहीं इन्वॉल्व हैं और जब तक हम इस प्रकार के लोगों को सिस्टम से बाहर नहीं करेंगे तब तक इसमें सुधार नहीं होने वाला और सुधार का एक पहलू नहीं होगा एक आयाम नहीं होगा बहुआयामी सुधार हमें बनाने पड़ेंगे 
राधा कृष्णन की जो कमेटी बनाई गई है नीट के लिए हम आशा करते हैं कि ये कमेटी कुछ अच्छे सुझाव देगी और दूसरे शिक्षाविदों से जो अकेडमिशियंस हैं वहाँ पे उनको जाकर उनको बुलाकर उनकी राय लेकर एक तंत्र को विकसित करने का प्रयास करेगी ऐसा हम उम्मीद करते हैं आशा करते हैं और सिर्फ एक सरकार से हम ना उम्मीद नहीं होंगे क्योंकि भविष्य एक करोड़ लोगों का है एन अकेला नेशनल टेस्टिंग एजेंसी है जो अकेले पूरे साल भर में एक करोड़ लोगों की परीक्षा लेती है 25 लाख तो सिर्फ नीट में आते हैं 14-15 लाख जेई मेन एग्जाम में आते हैं और दूसरे जो एग्जाम डेढ़ लाख अभी जो परीक्षा रद्द हुई उसमें थे तो ये सिस्टम को बदलने की जरूरत है और सही लोगों को लाने की जरूरत है हम कहा करते थे अपने यूथ आंदोलन के दिनों में कि फ्री एजुकेशन कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन एंड यूनिफॉर्म एजुकेशन शिक्षा मुफ्त हो शिक्षा समान हो और शिक्षा अनिवार्य हो अनिवार्य तो हमने कर दिया लेकिन समान हम नहीं कर पा रहे हैं अभी भी आईआईटी के लिए इतना रश क्यों होता है कि आईआईटी का दर्जा बाकी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज से बहुत ऊपर है हालांकि इंजीनियरिंग और मेडिकल में एक फर्क यह है कि इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज के लिए जितनी सीटें हैं डिमांड उससे कम है लेकिन क्वालिटी की जो सीटें हैं वहाँ डिमांड बहुत ज़्यादा है आई खासतौर से एन और ट्रिपल आई जो ये इन वहाँ डिमांड बहुत ज़्यादा है वहाँ पे सीटें लिमिटेड है पैंतालीस चालीस पैंतालीस हज़ार सीटें हैं और कई लाख विद्यार्थी इंजीनियरिंग में आना चाहते हैं मेडिकल का जो परीक्षा का धांधली है उसका कारण भी यही है नब्बे पचानवे हज़ार सीटें हैं सब मिला के हालाँकि कॉलेजेस बहुत बढ़ गए हैं अभी पहले दो कॉलेज हुआ करते थे अब सात मेडिकल कॉलेज हैं भारत में लेकिन परीक्षा देने वाले लोग कम से कम पच्चीस गुना हैं यानी कि एक सीट पर 25 विद्यार्थी हैं अगर आप पीजी की बात करिए पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट में डेढ़ डेढ़ दो दो करोड़ रुपए डोनेशन चल रहा है और डोनेशन क्यों चल रहा है डोनेशन इसीलिए चल रहा है कि पीजी की सीट जो है वो मुश्किल से दस हजार बारह हजार है और हर मेडिकल कॉलेज का स्टूडेंट जो एमबीबीएस करता है वो बाद में पीजी करना चाहता है क्योंकि एमबीबीएस में उतना अच्छा जॉब नहीं मिलता या उससे इतना फायदा नहीं है तो पीजी में तो हालत और खराब है वो हमने डिस्कस नहीं किया क्योंकि पीजी का भी एग्जाम रद्द रद्द हो चुका है वो बाद में करेंगे डॉक्टर स्वामी अगले प्रोग्राम में करेंगे अरविंद अरविंद जी डॉक्टर स्वामी लोगों आप आपसे कुछ सुनना चाहते हैं हिंदी में आप जरा प्लीज प्लीज डॉक्टर स्वामी लॉर्ड ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट सो थैंक यू सो मच नहीं मैं जो जो अरविंद ने बोला है उसके अतिरिक्त तो मैं कुछ और जोड़ नहीं सकता हूँ इतना ही कहूंगा कि निराश मत हुई क्योंकि मैंने बहुत देखा है मैं मुझे मैंने उस समय देखा है कि लोग कहते थे कि हम यहाँ सब भूख में मरेंगे क्योंकि हमारे देश में हम चावल उतनी नहीं पैदा कर सकते हैं और गेहूँ नहीं पैदा कर सकते हैं इस तरीके की बात आज वो कोई नहीं कहता है क्योंकि उससे हम आगे बढ़ गए हैं तो ये जो ऐसा घटना होती है उससे हम सबक सीख कर आगे बढ़ेंगे तो इससे हम आगे चले जाएंगे और जो हुआ है वो कभी आगे होगा नहीं ये इस आशा के साथ मैं समझता हूँ कि अगले बार जब हम इसी विषय पर रिव्यू करेंगे इसका समीक्षा करेंगे अब हम मैं आधा हिंदी में बोलूँगा और आधा अंग्रेजी में one small anecdotal thing uh, arvind ji uh, because of all these neat and whatever scams and things are going the number of students from india going abroad to study has doubled not not one 10% to it has doubled we are almost 8 lakh students per year are getting out of india because they don't believe in this system it is a shame that this government and the, and this prime minister is saying town taming and not do running nonsense Eight lakh students, Arvind ji. It used to be two lakhs in 2014. Today, eight lakh students are going abroad to study because they don't trust this system. They don't believe in the system. People who work hard and want to get an education, they know they cannot get it in India. It is a shameful situation in India today. Correct. I think we should talk about this issue in the future. That the Indian education system. इतना निराशापूर्ण क्यों है कि भारत के विद्यार्थियों को बाहर जाने की जरूरत पड़ी बल्कि हमें तो ये होना चाहिए कि विदेशों से लोग हमारे यहाँ पढ़ने आए एक जमाने में नालंदा विश्वविद्यालय की जो अभी दोबारा से उसको पुनर्स्थापित करने की कोशिश हो रही है 
पूरे दुनिया से लोग आते थे भारत में पढ़ने के लिए और अब भारत के तक रमेश जी आपने बताया तो ये डिमांड और सप्लाई का बात है अगर हम नए नए कॉलेजेस खोलेंगे अपॉर्चुनिटीज देंगे मेडिकल कॉलेज में सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि जितने ज्यादा विद्यार्थी परीक्षा में उपस्थित होते हैं उतनी उनके लिए सीट हमारे पास नहीं है इसीलिए कंपटीशन ज्यादा है इसीलिए करप्शन ज्यादा है तो सबसे पहले तो हमें प्रयास करना चाहिए कि सीटें सभी कॉलेज में बढ़ाई हैं जो जिस विषय को पढ़ना चाहता है उस विषय को पढ़ने की सुविधा और प्रवेश की सुविधा उसको उपलब्ध होना चाहिए ऑफकोर्स विद क्वालिफाइंग मार्क्स तो इन शब्दों के साथ हम इस प्रोग्राम के समापन पर पहुंचे हैं डॉक्टर स्वामी ने जो आज अपना अनुभव पूरा निचोड़ के हमें दिया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू रमेश जी थैंक यू जगदीश जी फॉर एडिंग टू दी डिस्कशन एंड आई आइडेंटिफाई न्यू पॉइंट्स फॉर अवर व्यूअर्स थैंक्स द टेक्निकल टीम लेड बाय आशीष शेट्टी ईश्वर गडगी राकेश ईश्वर अय्यर तेजस नवलगुल स्वामीनाथन विशाल मेहता Ajesh Nair and Gurdas Sethi like this we will be meeting again with a new topic and Dr Subramani Swami next Sunday 8 pm in next episode of words of wisdom gyan ganga till then namaskar jai hind jai shri ram jai hind